His signature thing is trying to get an airport that's not there, I think. Well, that's more than some. Welcome to News Beast, the New York Sun alumni edition. Talking Jesse Jackson Jr.'s one month absence from the public and all the rumors swirling around that. Era Lewis, anchor of New York One, friend, and Harry Siegel, New York uh, Sun editor, now Daily Beast editor, and uh, also a good friend. So, what's up with this? Uh, it's tough to, to uh, plead exhaustion when you're a member of Congress. It's sort of a Lohan esque thing to do. And now uh, the, the comeuppance is coming, the scrutiny is coming. Well, exhaustion in this case is some kind of a euphemism for what is probably a medical condition, whether it um, involves abuse, whether it involves uh, depression, whether it involves something else altogether. We simply don't know. On the other hand, this is somebody who has struggled with some medical issues before. There's a point in the um, mid 2000s when he put on 100 pounds all of a sudden and then had surgery to sort of reduce it. And that kind of came out of nowhere. And that really happens to adult men. It doesn't happen that often to adult men to put on 100 pounds. And, and so he's, um, he's been dealing with a, a, a bunch of stuff. And the word depression has been kicked around. Um, NBC reported that he, it was alcohol treatment, but the campaign has denied that. It's really not clear what's going on. Uh, Harry? So they said now it's a mood disorder, but this is the third statement. And those started two weeks after he actually took off for his Appalachian Trail of whatever sort. Um, Appalachian and, Trail of shame. Yeah. I mean, and during that time, there, 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 there were quotes from him, there were tweets, and uh, no, no acknowledgement that he wasn't out of office. In a lot of ways, this is the celebrity path. Uh, first you say exhaustion, uh, then you try to buy time, and then you clear out. But in uh, Junior's case, this has all been timed to the election cycle. So, uh, so he, he has this medical need for treatment that happens to happen right after the primary that effectively guarantees him another two years. And as Errol just noted, he's, he, he got it into his second announcement on the last day that independents had to enter into the general, effectively ensuring that he wouldn't have any real competition. And he's got two years to ride this out. That's right. So I mean, th this is timed, and you know, politics is never far away in, in Chicago. But because it's Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, there, there, are, there are real optic implications for this. And, and don't forget, I mean, part of the pressure put on this uh, congressman was the Blagojevich investigation, the question of whether he was the one offering to pick up the Senate seat in question. So all these things seem to have snowballed into Well, uh, that's right. There's, a, there's an ethics investigation going on by the House Ethics Committee uh, with regard to that. That can take years, as, as we've discovered in other cases. Yeah. On the other hand, the person who was supposed to be the go-between, who was sort of in the middle of all of this stuff, has, uh, was hit with a federal indictment or, uh, about two days after the last time anybody saw Jesse Jackson Jr. in Congress. So it's, it's, it, it could be coincidence, but this is somebody but let's who's now, not be naive. Well, this is somebody who's now facing serious charges related to medical billing fraud, uh, you know, alleged. And uh, he, he has also, this person, Mr. Nyack, come forward and said he was the one who paid to uh, fly a D.C. hostess mm -hmm. back and forth uh, from Chicago to, uh, to Washington, D.C. It's not clear. I mean, Jesse Jackson Jr. has never said he had an affair with this woman. On the other hand, his wife has been public about the fact that there was an affair and infidelity somewhere in their marriage. And she's a Chicago alderman. Yes, and, and so there's, there's, there's a lot of sort of personal stuff. One, one thing that we shouldn't lose sight of politically, and this is, I think, accounts for some of the impatience and some of the statements you've been hearing from the rest of the Illinois delegation. He's on the, the, the Appropriations Committee, and this is somebody with about 17 years of seniority. And you're supposed to carry stuff for other people, you know, um, major important stuff, as well as just the constituent services. People in Chicago, if they need help, they may be calling somebody else's office. There's a certain amount of impatience that starts to set in where people say, look, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, not just for your constituents, but for all of us. He's in some ways become, become his father and being, uh, uh, and being more of a uh, symbolic figure than, mm -hmm. than, a, uh, than, than a rainmaker or a player. He's, he's, been, he's been a decade and a half in, the, uh, in Congress and he doesn't have a signature accomplishment. Uh, his signature thing is trying to get an airport that's not there, I think. Well, that's more than some. But uh, look, <laughs> bottom line, I mean, no, no, no shame in an addiction as long as you deal with it. But you can't disappear as a member of Congress. Well, that's right. There's no shame in saying he's being treated for some unspecified disease. I mean, that's kind of what they've said, but they keep altering it. It's a mood disorder. It's this. It's not that. You know, I mean, don't tell us what it's not. Tell us what it is. Yeah, this, this, yeah. Is, this is, you know, communications as well as honesty 101. Get in front of the story. Tell the truth early. Final word, Errolos? Complex. Summer distraction. Exhaustion. Uh, that's all for us at News Beast. That was fun, guys. We'll see you soon.